This is Jerry Mischewski with Balance Community Slackline Outfitters. Today we're going to be looking at different taping styles. We're going to go over a few different ways to tape your high line uh, using two tapes, uh, our new fiber reinforced tape as well as athletic tape for one of the taping styles. Uh, yeah, let's jump right into it. All right, so let's build some tapes here. So for these next examples, I'm going to use Arrow 2 as the main line and Flight as the backup. Bad combo, I know, but it's what I had lying around. Um, so to start, I'm going to do just a simple tape. No sliding involved, just wrapping tape around. Um, this is the easiest example. And to determine how long of a piece of tape you're gonna need, um, you're gonna wanna know how many wraps you wanna do first. So I'm using a strong tape. We could probably get away with three or four wraps. And I know that uh, to do one complete wrap of both webbings, it takes about two and a half inches or um, roughly 62 millimeters of tape to go all the way around once. So if I want four wraps, I'm gonna want 10 inches of tape, <coughs> or about 25 and a half centimeters. So I got a nice ruler here, measure out 10 inches of tape. And to do this type of tape, I start on the main line and I'll leave about, I don't know, three quarters of an inch there, just enough to reach about the middle of the back up there on the other side. And then you can continue wrapping. Try to stay on the tape as much as you can as you wrap around. So that's two wraps. Three wraps. And four. Now with any tape style, um, you're gonna wanna try to end the tape on the bottom of the line. Um, and that's because when you're walking, you're walking on the top, and if you walk on the end of the tape, sometimes it can lift and cause the tape to unravel or become weaker over time. So it's, it's important to try to end the tapes on the bottom. Uh, now with this taping style, does neither line slides, or shouldn't, this adhesive isn't super strong, but with this taping style, the, the tape is fixed, doesn't move at all, neither line slide, and so uh, we've seen some issues with this tape style in, in, on bigger lines in that if there's any wrapping of the main line or the backup around the other line, it's a, uh, one spot where both lines are getting abraded. And so you, you can see potentially higher uh, damage as a result of the two lines interacting with this style of tape. I prefer to have at least one of the lines sliding through the tape such that the damaged area can be spread out if there is going to be one. Um, but yeah, that's that's one of the cons of this style of tape. The pro is, is it's super easy to, to do this tape. You just basically wrap it around like you just saw. So moving on, the next style of tape I'm going to do is the a more recent development um, type of sliding tape. It's gonna. It's called the affixed slider, and it can work in two directions: either main, main affixed, or backup affixed slider tapes. Some people refer to these as. Um, there's many names. I just can't think of them right now. I'll write it down in the article. But uh, the same principle applies. You want to know how many wraps you want to do on the line. I'm going to stick with four because it's easy. Uh, it still takes two and a half inches per wrap, but on top of that, you're going to add about three inches or 75 millimeters for the sliding part. Um, so if we want four wraps, four times two and a half inches, 10 inches, plus an additional three, so 13 inches of tape. So I'll measure it out, about 13 inches. So I'm gonna first do a main affixed slider tape. I call it main sliders. 
So what you're going to do is you have your two lines stacked like this, main on top, with the sticky up, slide it underneath the main and stick it to the bottom of the main. And you want to leave about an inch and three quarters or roughly um, 45 millimeters, rough, roughly, a little bit less there. And then you're going to fold the long side over the top and stick it to itself. So now you have an inch and three quarters, there's 45 millimeters, of where there's no, no adhesive on either side. It's non-sticky there and non-sticky there. But the stickiness starts here. So now we can take that and wrap it around both lines. You can see the non-sticky part makes it all the way around the backup and then continues around onto the top. That's important. You wanna make sure that the entire backup onto the main is covered in a non-sticky part. That's gonna allow this line to slide through the tape without causing the tape to catch or anything like that. So we'll continue around trying to stick, stay on the tapes. That's two wraps, three, and four. It looks like I cut a little too bit too much. So 12 and a half inches is probably a good amount, or 13 and a half, because I, I ended the tape on the top there, which is not good. And so this is a main slider which is what I like to call it, which is short for main affixed slider. As you can see, the backup slides through the tape, whereas the tape stays on the main. And another cool thing about these tapes is because it's wrapping around the main line, if it were to break, it's very unlikely that the tape's gonna fall to the ground beneath, beneath the line, which is important for, from an environmental impact standpoint. This is a great style of taping. I highly recommend the main affix sliders or the back of affix sliders, which I'm gonna do right now. So same thing, let's go with 12 and a half inches of tape this time. This time, we're gonna have the backup up. You don't have to do it this way. You could tape it this way, but it's a little more confusing. When I'm bulk taping my high lines, I always do it with whichever line is affixed on the top. So this is a backup affixed slider, or backup slider as I call them. So backup up. Same thing, lift up the backup, slide the tape with sticky up underneath, stick it to the bottom, leave about an inch and three quarters out, 45 millimeters. A little too much there. Uh, not quite enough. There we go. Two and three quarters. Take the long end, stick it onto the other part. Non sticky, both sides. Wrap around the main line. You can see there's enough non sticky to come up all the way around to the backup. Two wraps, three wraps, and perfect four wraps with the tape ending on the side. A little bit more would have been better, but that's fine. So now that we have the main up, we can see that the main slides now, and the backup is affixed. The tape is affixed to the backup. Uh, this is my favorite typing style. Uh, the reason being, you can specify how big of a backup loop you want, meaning how long the spacing is between tapes on the backup, and they really equalize on the main because tapes tend to slide a lot better on a tension line rather than on a loose line on these main affixed sliders. And so I prefer this. Um, one downside is if you have backup interactions going around the main, you have one singular point at every tape that's likely gonna get more abrasion than the rest of the line if 
there's a lot of interaction between the two lines, which is where tape spacing comes, comes into play, which we'll discuss in if, uh, another article coming soon. Um, but yeah, so given that you have the right spacing, this is my preferred taping style, mainly because of the equalization properties that it has. So moving on, now we have another sliding tape. This is an old school style taping method. Uh, it's hardly used anymore and for good reason because it's not that great. So same, same uh, measurement principles apply, two and a half inches per wrap. We want four wraps, 10 inches, but you need about two additional inches of tape. So 12 inches or 30 centimeters. 12 inch tape. Then we're gonna, at the two inch mark, 50 millimeters, we're gonna fold it in half. Just like that. You should probably do a better job than I did. You can see it's a little crooked there. You wanna cover that stickiness as much as you can. So this can be done either way with the main sliding or the backup sliding. I'm gonna do it with the backup sliding. So what I'll do is I'll put the folded section with the sticky part up, the folded section underneath the backup with the sticky part up and then take that little tab and put it between the lines, just like that. Then come up and around. There's one wrap, two. Try to keep it in the line, three. And again, I measured wrong. Wonderful. So there we go, we have it. This is main affixed, but it's an old school slider tape. Um, one of the reasons why people don't use this is because of that little tab that's between the two lines, if the backup or main slides a lot, depending on how you configure your tape, this tab can pull out and unravel the tape super easily. Um, the only pro for this tape is that it's a little bit easier than these main or backup affixed sliders. Uh, but other than that, it's not that great of a taping style. I'd avoid it if, you, if at all possible. Now, finally, the oldest school sliding tape. This is gonna be using an athletic tape. This, uh, this style goes back to when Chris Rigby and I first started using slider tapes. There's an article on it, which I'll link, link below. Um, really great taping method. We've, we've used these tapes on lines for up to two years, the same tapes, and had zero breakage on them. Uh, and that's mainly because of the durability of athletic tape and just how well uh, it sticks to the webbing too. It, it also had to do with how many tapes we use. We were doing one meter spacings, but that's another story. Uh, but the same same length principle applies two and a half inches per wrap. So I'm gonna do four wraps, so 10 inches. Make a 10 inch piece. And lay it out in front of you, just like that. And then we're gonna make a two inch piece, or two and a half inch. Sticky side up on the long piece. The short piece, you're gonna go perpendicular to the long piece, about an inch from the top, 25 millimeters. And with sticky down, you're gonna meet the stickies, center it, just like that. And then wrap it around. There you go. So now we have sticky, non-sticky, sticky, and then all non-sticky here. So this, 
This can also be done on as a backup or main slider. I'm going to do it as a backup slider here. So the main up, pick up both lines, and center the backup on that non-sticky side on the sticky side. Wrap the short piece around, stick it to the top of the main, and then follow the other side around and do your four wraps. and four, perfect length. There you go. I really like this style of tape. It takes forever to make these though. Uh, if you have the time, I would recommend using this, this style. If, if, you don't, if you're not using one of these two main or backup affixed sliders, this is the next best. Uh, it's really nice, really soft on the feet if you ever step on your tapes. It's really strong. As we saw in the last article, athletic tape is quite quite strong. Um, yeah, and it, the only downside is, well, one of the downsides is when you remove these tapes, they do leave a fair bit of residue. And if it's hot outside, you do tend to see a lot of goopy tapes, and they tend to become un unattached to whichever line they're fixed to. Um, yeah, that pretty much covers the five basic tape styles. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask below. Uh, make sure you check out the article linked below or there's a written description of all these with measurements and such. Uh, and yeah, check out our website, balancecommunity.com for more articles and videos like this uh, about slacklining. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. And yeah, thanks for watching. This is again, Jerry Mischewski with Balance Community.